Hey, so today I want to talk about Gaspar Noel's Irreversible. I think this film was released in 2002 and this film stars Monica Bellucci and Vincent Castle. Now, it totally depends on the type of film that you watch or the type of film circle that you are. Irreversible is actually quite a famous film. I have known about this film for a long time and I finally got around to watching this film. Now this film is quite notorious for actually one particular scene but two particular scenes actually have to seem hired almost everybody. And on the other hand this film is also considered uh, part of the fringe extremity movement so therefore you can kind of guess what kind of film this is going to be. Now let me talk about the aesthetic of the film for a second because since the film starts this film is actually in reverse chronological order and I kind of like that as a storytelling device in this film but I read that he actually actually the studio wanted him to re uh, release this film in reverse chronological order because of the recent fame and success of Christopher Nolan's Memento so for me that's now kind of feels like a sort of a mixed bag because it almost feels like if it was released like sometime later this would have been done in reverse chronological order and the whole essence of the film would kind of be same though some other people have also kind of argued that the reverse chronological order actually kind of helps the narrative of the film I wouldn't say it actually helps it but it's kind of okay they did and it's like a for a large part it seems like a gimmick now on the other hand uh, the cinematography and the sound they are very jarring if you have any problem with seizures or uh, you get nauseated kind of easily or you know you have other visual impairments or any kind of problem you should definitely watch this film with extreme caution because even though I did not have that much some of the scenes from the starting and the end of the film just like kind of too much it's almost like he kind of wanted to bludgeon our emotions and it is also said that, that they used a sound, su soundtrack that kind of subconsciously actually created a nauseating film uh, nauseating feeling for the audience so you kind of get what I'm saying this is just that kind of a film so I actually also wanted to check this out this film after so long because this soundtrack act actually uh, composed by one half of the duo Daft Punk and I love Daft Punk and their work Thomas Backwater actually uh, composed the score and the score is fine I wouldn't say the score is something remarkable or kind of jumps at you it's okay it serves the purpose it serves the film now if we were to dive into the content of the film this is a very simple narrative film so that is why it feels like a lot of hatred and vitriol has been thrown into this film because it may feel like that the kind of you know overbearing things the portrayal of violence and assault the way it's portrayed kind of seem like voyeuristic and sort of like you know enjoying oneself because if you look at the second scene actually the third scene in reverse chronological order that scene is done in very much conservative way you sort of just get the insinuation of the club that they are in and you do not actually see anything but when the infamous scene happens with Monica Bellucci that film scene is actually shot kind of in a voyeuristic way I would say because the whole scene is like 9 to 10 minutes long and it's uncut so called uncut I don't even know if that's a long take or what but that scene is uncut and that scene feels like kind of goes against the whole grain of the film because I wouldn't necessarily say that Gaspar Noe actually directed this film voyeuristically. When the film starts, it starts with so much style, so much overbearing kind of experimentation and it almost feels like you are watching an art piece or kind of an experimental something. But as the film progresses and that's where the problem is because just right around the famous, infamous assault scene, that's when he kind of like feels like at least abandons the whole thing and like they he wants you to show the whole thing in full frame now that kind of could be interpreted a lot of ways and people have interpreted a lot of ways 
some say it might be for voyeuristic reasons some say just look at the thing this is what happens in real life you should not be kind of you know not taking your eyes off of it but that's not how Gaspar no actually shot the first half of the film so that's where I think there's a conflicting styles and I think he should have rectified it one way or other another now when the assault scene happens it might feel like it's just happening for just happening sake because in the other French extremist films like Martyrs or Hot Attention or Frontiers everything has a subliminal message but in this film it feels like what is happening is the forefront of things but that's not how Gaspar Noe actually directs his film I've seen his love love is a very different kind of film than what you would expect from a film called love or especially from a French film called love this is not that kind of film love is very blunt very complicated very messy I guess that's what he wanted to say that love is but here the whole scene that is infamous actually kind of binds the whole film together and that's where I think the problem is now this is not just happening as a sole purpose because during the assault that is happening you can see that uh, there's a it's like a silhouette a guy that comes in but doesn't help her he just runs away so to, to that thing Gaspar also is trying to say something but for me the clash of the styles kind of made me confused a little because now I can't feel like should I like take his side or should I go into the conservative route and say no it's not being done but I guess after almost 20 years this film has still kind of been tested through the time and people kind of still remember this I have watched this film after two decades I have known about this film more than 10 years so I guess this has that power I guess this has that infamous power that Gaspar Noe brings and kind of that's I guess for now I would say that it is what it is if you ask me for my opinion I would say that it's a very straightforward film that has been complicated in a way that has been done for me at least feels like way more style over substance because I wouldn't say that there's any underlying hidden meaning besides what's being seen in the screen so that is why I give this film 3 out of 5 and if you are into this sort of film you definitely know who you are you will definitely watch this film this does not actually bear any of the uh, you won't wait for my recommendation but I would say that yeah you can watch it at least one time at least just for the sheer veracity of the film or how Gaspar Noe works you can watch it